Hey everyone, Hi, welcome back to the Book Brood. And today we're coming at you with our September book haul. Our first one was an order from Book Outlet, and there were a few damaged books the first time that this order shipped, and so we contacted Book Outlet, and luckily Book Outlet saved the day. Hooray, thank you very much. Yeah, I was I was really surprised at how awesome they were, um, because I had ordered scratch dent copies, but they sent us brand new copies as replacements because that they were damaged, and... Mm -hmm. During the shipping. Damage during the shipping. Right, yeah. So I, I sent them a picture, and it was very obvious what had happened. In the entire half of the box was, like, ripped open and smashed. And it was obviously done in shipping. So, But they little, were really awesome about it. Yeah, a little traumatizing for Heidi. I was so mad when I was trying to open it. Um, but I've since calmed down a little bit. Yes. So the first thing I got was Bones and All by Camille De Angelis. Camille De Angelis. Yeah. yeah. And this has been on my TBR for a really long time. And all I know about it is that there is a woman who, when she gets too close to someone, I think emotionally gets too close to someone, she eats them. And that just sounds awesome. I think she's, like, trying to find her mother or, like, her, like, why she is the way she is well with your description and the little the little tidbits and how they're written on here it's they're very clever it's funny. nice and i got one thing on the book outlet hall and that is the end of eternity by isaac asimov i've been searching for this one in used bookstores for years now and it's avoided me for the, all those years, so uh, it was finally time to order it, so Book Outlet had a copy of it. A and, nice copy. Yes, a nice copy. And so I've got I've got this one now, and I think I'm done with my collection of Asimov? of Asimov. Not his entire collection, just the books that are on the top 100 list. But he, he had actually, he had a bunch, and he actually put them all in the same universe, so it might be Ooh. worth going through and, you know, reading his whole his whole works. That's yeah. awesome. I love yeah. when authors do that. Mm -hmm. That's just so cool. Okay, the next one I got was Horns by Joe Hill. And I started this on audiobook last year, but I lost my spot. And it was really difficult for me to find time to listen to this because um, it's not one I can read around my kids or it's not one I can listen to around the kids. There's a lot of cursing and violence and... It was a really interesting story. I remember watching the movie and I was pleased that the book was just as good. Like, it was just as intriguing, I think. Mm -hmm. um, it's a weird story, but... Um, intriguing is a good way to phrase it. Yeah, it's definitely different than a lot of things that I've read. It's about a man who wakes up and he's growing these horns and... They make people tell him the deepest, darkest secrets that they have and stuff. And it's, and he's dealing with the loss of his ex or his fiance who was murdered. And it's just a whole big thing. And I'm excited to finish that. And the next one she got was The Host by Stephanie Meyer. Right. Which I've been told is nothing like Twilight. So I should not expect um, that horrible Twilight vibe. And I've been told it's much better. And Book Outlet had it for so cheap that I just had to pick up a copy. Unexpectedly moving. Yeah. And they had Station Eleven. I am so excited about this. This is by Emily St. John Mandel. And I have heard nothing but fantastic things about this book. This is apparently post-apocalyptic to the point of, like, civilization is trying to make a comeback. And this is, follows a troupe of circus performers or, like, um, uh, actors, and, and they're trying to keep the arts alive in this new civilization mm -hmm. um, where a lot of things are just about survival, and there it, apparently it's a lot about um, why art is important and the history of it and everything and mm -hmm. perpetuating that. Yeah, the... The storyteller was a very big deal in 
tribal society. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. All right. And we needed to get to a certain dollar amount on book outlet, right? On the order. Yeah, but we didn't (laughs) even get what we were supposed to get for that money because our shipment was so messed up. But it's Anyway, they Mm -hmm. saved the day for us. They did. Yeah. But we, she, Heidi, found one that we needed for our bookshelf, and that is The Iliad and the Odyssey by Homer. And I was always fascinated by picture books of the uh, the Odyssey and the Iliad uh, growing up, uh, being a child. Yeah. And so I've never actually gone to the source, though, but one day. And I have it available now. What I love about this is this was a scratch dent copy, hardback. This is the only damage, is just a little tear in the dust jacket. And it was so much cheaper than anywhere you could find it. It's for like a brand mm-hmm. new copy. And I'm really excited. I tried to. Looks I think, good without the dust jacket. Yeah, too. it does. Yeah. I think I was supposed to study this like my freshman year of high school or something, but I don't remember a lot of it. But I'm very excited to get into this. And then we went to our local used bookstore, the whole family, yes. and we got some things. We love to make trips to the local used bookstore. And what I found, this is the book I've already read, and we talk about this series a lot. And this is Rama 2 by Arthur C. Clarke and Gentry Lee. We've both read this whole series. It's very good. So good. Very, very good. You... You feel like you've lived with these characters for decades, you know? <laughs> this is the it's... only series that I've ever read where the first book you read, you, as you're starting to understand the story, mm-hmm. you think that you've got the whole grasp of the whole story, but then by the end of the series, you realize, like, what you knew at the beginning was so small compared to this huge universe, like, world that, yeah. like, just so awesome. Mm-hmm. I used to have this whole series in heart, in paperback, and I found, I actually traded them in because I wasn't sure if I was ever going to read them again, but mm-hmm. I kept thinking about them so much uh, and finding a hardback, so I couldn't pass it up, and because I was in a splurge mood. I love these hardback. Why don't mm-hmm. you, yeah. And this is the last in the series of the four, uh, so Rama, Re- Rama Revealed by Arthur C. Clarke and Gentry Lee again. This is the last book in the series. Um, This is, I think this is actually a lot of people's favorite, at least in the, of the three, of the three sequels. You know, the the first book was very different, completely different characters. Yeah, that second Um, book was rough to get to transition. Yeah, it is a, it is an interesting transition because... It's from a standalone to a trilogy, right? In the same... Right. In the same timeline. I'm pretty sure Gentry Lee mostly wrote the sequels. Oh, okay. Um, but either got approval from Arthur C. Clarke or, mm-hmm. you know, Arthur helped a little bit. Right. I'm not sure the whole story, but anyway, I still love the sequels. They're great. And it is a, a bit of a transition going to Rama 2 from, from the first book. Right. But by the time you're at this book, you're in love with the story and, and everything. Oh, oh man. so great. So great. And found a hardback of that. Uh, Book number three, I'll have to find a hardback eventually. But Yeah, those were nice copies. Yeah. I really like those. And we told the kids that they mm-hmm. could pick out a couple of things. And mm-hmm. we just had to show you what they chose because this is awesome. So our four-year-old chose uh, the Transformation Hulk Rage a picture book. I'm super proud of her for picking that. And then our five-year-old mm-hmm. picked out... Frankenstein moved in on the fourth floor, and Dracula, and this copy of Dracula, she was so excited about. It, there's, it, it's pretty awesome. There's pop-outs, and um, this the, this she, was her defining moment. She was like, Mom, I have to get this, because watch. Rah! Rah! This book is awesome, and for $10, I mean, there's a board game in here, there's mm-hmm. maps, there's... She absolutely loves it. And the the owner of the used bookstore was checking us out at the end, and he was he was so great with, oh, with was. having a good time with her, going through the books, uh, you know, making sure she's brave enough for them. Yeah. yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. It was one of those moments where um, 
as a parent, you're like, do I try and censor my child mm-hmm. um, or do I just roll with her natural um, Interest. interests mm-hmm. and we just let her do it? And she is so, so interested in in this story that she picks it up almost every day. So, And I think it's an actual condensed version of Bram Stoker's story. Yeah, I really, the, yeah. The, the written part that... And this is something she wouldn't be so intimidated to read. She's on the cusp of getting into children's chapter books. It's just not being intimidated by the scale of the book itself. That's something that could definitely ease her into it, hopefully. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. I have been looking for this book at the used bookstore for years now, and I'm so excited. I just, I, I was almost done, and then I just turn around briefly, and I see it sitting there on the wall. And that's The Princess Bride! Oh my gosh, and I love this cover version. It's not a movie cover or anything. And I was just so excited to find this. Mm. Yay! I didn't realize it was such a long story. or such a, a... Yeah. Because they condense mm. it into an hour and 45 minute movie. Well, it's just such a such an effective movie. Once I read that, I'll probably you know, feel like well, they left a lot out. Okay, so generally. you've got a long introduction. That's introduction. But still, yeah, then you've got story. I'm, I'm really excited. Although I do hear that this is one of those rare instances where the movie was actually better than the book. Oh. We'll see. Yeah. All right. I found this collection of the Foundation Trilogy. I have Foundation already in a, in a paperback. This was a tricky choice because there was a hard, nice hardback copy of uh, Foundation and Empire, which is the second book in the series. And it was there too, but I needed two the... The second sequel and the third sequel. Mm. I, I'm going to go back to the used bookstore and see, <laughs> see if that hardback's there because it was a really nice copy. And I mm. just go grab it just because. But I haven't read the two sequels yet. I have read Foundation. It's very clever. Clever writing. Um, smart. Sci-fi. So That's a convenient so. way to have the whole trilogy, yeah. though, and a nice little bind-up. Mm-hmm. That it's not overly huge yeah considering there's three books in there yeah Mm -hmm. that's nice okay i have chains of command and lines of departure i'm not sure which order these go in but these are sequels to terms of enlistment thank you so much terms of enlistment which i wasn't sure if i was going to continue on in the series these are military sci-fi and our main character moves from the army to the navy and i wasn't happy about that switch and i think that most of the rest of it is going to be navy not that excited about that but um i am excited to get back into this world because i did really enjoy terms of enlistment oh and these are by marco clus i found those All right, and I was lucky enough to find The Man in the High Castle by Philip K. Dick. This one does not come through. Philip K. Dick, in general, does not come through the used bookstore often at all. Um, There are some used bookstores around here that put new copies of Mm. the famous stuff, you know, in, and then, you know, you get to the counter. It'll be $20. And I'm like, whoa, okay. Uh, Right. But. Anyway, I'm glad I found this one. I found it on audiobook at the library, and I've I've burned it to our hard drive, and uh, might do it on audiobook. I I might read the real thing. Um, We'll just see. But I'm glad I finally got a copy of that one, and it was very satisfying to find it at the used bookstore. I always wonder at the used bookstore how much of it is people don't want to give up their copies of books, Mm -hmm. and how much is how much of it is our area, and and what right. people are actually reading yes. in our area. Mm-hmm. Because they always have a very small amount of um, young adult and uh, uh, YA. So um, that's, that's a 
That's a genre that I read a lot of, apparently, and I'm always mad that there's not a lot of it. There's several, several tall shelves of Harlequin. Oh, uh, oh, thank you. Know. you. <laughs> yeah, that's not a section I need. But more just saying something about, I guess, the area we live in. Oh, okay, yeah, I get it. Um, I was intrigued to find this. This is Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell in a nice hardback. Um, apparently this is a collector's edition because there's a lot of beautiful cover art. Um, but this is the book that Carry On spiraled off of and I read Carry On and I really enjoyed it. So I am intrigued to get to this. Not as intrigued as Carry On, but they didn't have Carry On. I looked. I looked so hard. They didn't have it. Is it a, a dating but relationship? Yeah. But... Yeah, it's a young woman hey. goes to college and she's very introverted and she's <laughs> very... Um, she's got a huge online personality in life, uh, but she, you know, she needs a boy to help her come into her lake. I don't know. I hear it's really good, but to bring her out of her shell. I haven't read any Rainbow Row, but she seems very popular. And so yeah, I she does. would hope it's more than, than yeah. something that simple. I really I... liked Carry On. That was really good. So. All right, and I haven't read the sequels to my favorite book, because you can just read the first book and stay with it, but there were these hardback copies. This is Heretics of Dune. This is book five, I believe, or four or five. Anyway, uh, this is one of the sequels. I still haven't found book number two which is uh -oh. kind of frustrating, but I have everything except book number two now because this is Chapter House Dune, which is the last Dune book that was written fully by Frank Herbert. And that's where I'm going to end it there. <laughs> but very glad to have very nice hardback copies of these editions. They're really these, nice, yeah. These stories here. Because I know they're going to be special to me. Mm-hmm. So. And those look nice without the dust jackets, too. They do. Yeah, yeah. They look very nice. And the last one I got was The Book Thief by Marcus Zuzak, which I hear a lot of people on YouTube uh, or on BookTube really like. And most people read this in high school, but I apparently was too old because this book only came out a few years ago. Um, and Yeah, 2006. And I was really excited to read it until the guy at the bookstore was very hesitant. He's like, oh, you're going to read that? Mm, okay, <laughs> that's an interesting choice. Okay, hope you enjoy it. I can't remember what exactly he had to say about it. Um, he was trying not to speak bad about it, I could tell. But um, mm -hmm. he was saying it was a, an interesting choice to narrate it the way it is. Narr it's narrated by death. And it's a World oh. War Two novel. Interesting. And okay. So he was he was saying that he was very surprised that it was required reading for a lot of high school students mm. because it's it, the narration is so different. Yeah. All right. And then the next is Heidi made a run to St. Vinny's mm -hmm. nearby and look for used books. They have great she prices. Found. I found, yeah, Abraham Lincoln Vampire Slayer. Vampire Hunter. Yes, mm -hmm. by Seth Graham Smith. And um, this just looks awesome. I don't... I've heard the book's very good. Yeah. Um, I saw the movie. It was meh. Yeah, I'm, I'm intrigued. And then this, I'm super excited about Sherlock Holmes vs. Dracula by uh, John H. Watson, MD, <laughs> as edited by Lauren D. Estelman. <laughs> so funny that it's written by John. But mm. it is written in that traditional Sherlock um, style. Yeah, yeah, with like the old English writing, and it's, it reads very much like um, a Sherlock Holmes novel. But he's investigating why this ship washed up and everyone's dead. Mm -hmm. And turns out it was Dracula. All right. Yeah. 
And then I found Cinder um, by Marissa Meyer, and this is book one in the Lunar Chronicles, which BookTube seems to really, really like, and all I know is that it is um, fairy tale retellings, but in this one, it's Cinderella, but she's a cyborg, and she lives on the moon. But everyone says it's really good, so for $1.50, I figured I'd give it a shot. Sweet. Yeah. And the last one is Fallen by Lauren Kate. And I know very little about this, um, but it says it's set in a boarding school and that it's kind of like a preternatural, like, it doesn't specifically say vampire, werewolf, or like magic, what kind of thing it is, but it just looks dark and creepy and um, I'm intrigued. It's a long series. Yeah. Apparently. Yeah. So, um, all right, that is our so far September book haul there from Absolutely. multiple sources. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Bye.